tip that idea. The option for subsidized daycare was my only option. I could not afford to pay full price daycare. All day daycare is thirty some dollars a day, and I just that just blows me away. It does. So as I was working these crazy hours in construction, so it was the easiest way to make it less interrupted for them. But I was literally giving my whole paycheck to the childcare. Thirteen hundred dollars a month in childcare to make sure that they're taken care of while I'm looking. Thirteen hundred dollars a month. She was paying, I think, thirty-eight dollars a day per child, and I'm looking at her like, "Why are you working?" Like, I just can't see putting all my money into childcare. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And that our uh, federal government feels that he's doing a great job providing Can Canadians with this tax cut of $100 of, uh, you know, universal child care benefit. We appreciate that you came out today and we're going to share some information about the Rethink Child Care campaign. So last year at Phase 1, we hosted a, uh, our first kitchen table conversation here and we had a really great response to that. And so now this is Phase 2 where we're hoping to build networks uh, and strengthen our coalitions with other agencies uh, in preparation, especially for the municipal election on October 27th. And then, like I also mentioned, our federal election in 2015. Every time we get close to daycare, the government changes and they throw it away and we start all over again. I think I've done this 12 times since the 1980s. 40 years ago, it was recommended with the status of women, they called for a national child care program. And we're still trying to achieve that goal. Um, and it's a daily, ongoing struggle. we got to do something. What we're saying is our kids, our women, have to leave the job yes. to have children. Mm -hmm. And when we go back, is the job still there? Actually, the magnitude of this campaign is quite huge, and there's so many other um, associations, and uh, it's incredible. As I was going through the research, one link would lead to another link, and uh, I just kept finding more and more articles that are all in support of child care. We have to make sure that the child care is back on the forefront. These children need to be protected. We need to get our voices out there. Uh, the only way that change can be made is if people hear us speak and what the concerns are, what our challenges are day to day with this. So my husband was uh, apprenticing as a bondman, and he didn't make a whole lot of money. And I, before I got pregnant, I went out and I worked. But then when I got, had the babies, I wasn't able to go out and work. I couldn't afford the childcare because he was only bringing home. $140 a week. Well, in some cases, when they're taking, they're not taking jobs, like you said, mm -hmm. they're not going to work, so don't have a double income, so don't have another choice. Right. Right. right? So then there are some, in some cases that they're, they've taken away jobs. Mm -hmm. And the challenges you go through as a parent, and time and time again, it's like, wow, am I going to actually make it? Now I see my daughter, um, I have two daughters. My oldest daughter never worked because she could not afford the daycare. And what I'm finding today, though, is that we've now identified that as being a barrier, a very barrier for a woman to upgrade. In between, who could watch, or you know, or maybe take a day off, or when's our shutdown, right? Yeah. So that we don't need anybody over that time period. Martin was here working split shifts. So it was not a regular standard nine to five jobs. It was different shift work. It was seven days a week. We were fortunate to have two teenagers who were down the street, so we could juggle. Okay, so this week it'll be you know Rachel, or, or you know, maybe Thursday it'll be Ashley, and then maybe one day it's my parents, or one day it's like Pat's parents, right? And you're trying to make ends meet. So I got my parents involved while they're working. So now I'm juggling the schedule with my parents, and I'm like, okay, I can, if I can figure out, okay, who can be open the earliest in the daycare facility within the Windsor Essex County that I can drop them off at, and then by any chance, can I get somebody to volunteer prior to them opening to take my child to the child care center for my parents to pick them up 
before I can find somebody else to pick them up from the childcare center to bring back home. And that was a struggle on a daily basis. You get home, say like 5, 30, 6 o'clock, and then somebody might have to make dinner. And then, you know, what about homework or extracurricular activities? So I left work and went to get the children so I could look after them until the mother came home. The kids get sick and the workplaces are going crazy because we can't come into work and our lives become complicated because we can't ask our parents who are still working to watch our sick kids and then it becomes a forefront issue. And I think that we really dropped the ball, really dropped the ball for our children who are really the people that are going to take care of us by not taking care of them. It's a circle. because he has um, a physical disability, so most of the time he's in a wheelchair, or sometimes he's able to use a walker, or he scoots around on the floor. But uh, to get him, you know, into a car, or, or into the wheelchair, or from that wheelchair, you know, he needs a lot of specialized treatment, right? And that also costs a lot of money, you know, and um, so there's a lot of concerns about what kind of care you're getting for your children as well. Kids went to daycare, they were taken care of by people who were educated. And that's the ticket. Yes. That's the ticket. Like, yeah. you know, you can get somebody to come in on a Saturday night to watch your kids while you go to a movie, but to do that every single day is not the answer. You want somebody who has experience, experience and education. education. Yep. That's who I want my children to be taken care of. Child care is actually overtaking the cost of university tuition.
for both of my children without this, this system. That's so right. when it does work. Where do we go from here? I mean, we obviously have to get the word out. That's the most important thing. We've got the federal elections coming up. They should be hearing our stories. We've got to make sure this is on the forefront all the way through because we need the grassroots all the way to our senior leadership to make sure the child care is right there. Beth right now has a universal uh, public funded daycare system where they pay uh, $7 a day for daycare. That's what we need, but it needs to be across the country. Every single province and territory needs to have that. Postcards uh, also at the table where you can sign in as well. And uh, the ones that we have are in French because these are a pretty hot demand right now. <laughs> and so it's, we're having a hard time even getting the English ones in, right? So if you um, if you look at this, the story says, um, pardon me, the caption. So many families are struggling to find decent childcare and are scrambling to piece together care they can afford. While 75% of mothers of three to six year olds are working, there are enough regulated spaces for only 20% of children under six. Parent fees can exceed housing costs, and subsidies fail to help most low and modest income families. It doesn't have to be this way. Good child care gives parents options to help them balance work and family life. It also grows jobs and the economy. Prime Minister, it's time to rethink child care. I urge you to show leadership. Make child care a national priority, and work with provinces to make a reality. But we really would appreciate if everyone here could share your information, right? Tell people about the stories. Share stories that you might have heard today. We need to spread the word and we need to build networks. And, uh, you know, this is one way of doing it. And, and a lot of other associations are, are doing campaigns as well. Um, kitchen table talks, kind of like this one, is, is a good way to do it. It's time for women to unite together, moms to unite together, and to come together and put this issue at rest, put a national child care for yeah. all children in Canada. That's right. Because until our children are taken care of, there is really nothing else we can do. We can't go to work, we can't go to the grocery stores, we can't do any, our kids' needs have to be met. This is just not a one's issue. No, so it is a one's issue. Absolutely. So to make a change, everybody collectively needs to have it at the forefront. And this is the time to do it. So let's get done.